So it all began when I started my dream job. Oops. All began in 2017 when I started my dream job as a pediatric nurse um, in October of 2017. Before that, I was actually a birthday party Disney princess. So it was a big step from being a princess to actually like being a nurse, which was my dream job. And I always knew I wanted to work in pediatrics. I started to notice that I was getting migraines um, and I figured new job, new stresses. You know, a lot of people say being a nurse is stressful. So yeah, but my mom encouraged me to go to my primary um, and see, you know, what she thought. Um, she agreed that it was probably migraines, but she wanted to get um, a scan just in case. Um, but she also put me on migraine medication. Like I said, she just wanted an MRI just to be sure, as she stated. Um, shortly after this, um, we, my family and I actually went on a Disney vacation in December of 2017. Um, I was still having migraines but I was using over-the-counter Excedrin migraine, which was fine because I'm a huge Disney fanatic and nothing was gonna ruin Disney for me. So I was happy to take Excedrin migraine as needed, but not excessively. Um, this picture really stands out to me because it's like your classic Disney you know, picture in front of the castle. Um, however, looking back on it in this picture, I had my brain tumor um, unbeknownst to anybody. Um, I was actually registering for college classes when my primary care provider called me. Um, she said, there was a lesion on your skin and you need to see a neurosurgeon because it needed to be removed. Um, I credit my mom because I have no idea how I drove home from registering for classes. Um, I know I called her, but that's all a blank. I remember her telling me, we're gonna go, we're gonna see what he has to say, and we're gonna do this thing, we got this. What's a lesion? So then we were looking up what lesions were on the internet and whatnot. Um, I had my consultation with my neurosurgeon on January 30th of 2017. Like I said, my mom encouraged me going into it. We were gonna he hear what he had to say, um, but then also get a second opinion, You know, see what we wanted to do. He actually admitted, it, admitted me that day um, to, I think, their neurological floor um, and ran a variety of scans and tests um, because they're unsure if this lesion that was in my brain was vascular. So if they went to take it out, they didn't know if there was a possibility that I could bleed out. On January 31st, I had an EVT, which stands for endoscopic third rent ventriculostomy surgery. Um, what that basically means is the tumor that I had was blocking the flow of the cerebral spinal fluid in my head, which was causing the pressure. Um, this surgery was pretty much emergency because the pressure in my head was so high that they thought I was going to have a stroke. Um, an external shunt, which is an appliance that is used to drain fluid off of your brain, was placed um, also in my head off of it, out of it. Um, that was January 31st. Um, the external shunt and the surgery was done in hopes of properly draining all the excess fluid, thus reducing the pressure within my skull and preventing me from having to have a permanent shunt. Because um, as a pediatric nurse, I saw a lot of patients that had permanent shunts that had gone wrong and I did not want a permanent shunt. I was solely against it because I had seen all the problems that kids had had with them. Um, this picture, um, I kind of tried to circle it in blue, but my tumor is that giant white blob right in the middle. Um, and you can see how the ventricles in my brain are like huge. They're not supposed to be that big. Um, but yeah, that's a lovely picture of my brain tumor. On February 3rd, they decided they needed to biopsy the tumor to see if it was cancerous or not. This would be the second brain surgery that I would have in five day span. Um, the pressures in my skull were still really elevated, um, and it was looking as I was probably going to have to get a permanent shunt. Um, like I said, I'm working as a nurse. I'd always seen patients whose shunts had malfunctions, so I was very, very against it. Um, my mom had to remind me that, and I was working as a nurse in a hospital, I wasn't seeing the shunts that were successful. I was seeing the ones that were going wrong, so there was a possibility that they could go wrong and I could have no problems. An interesting story with it, this is my neurosurgeon knew that I did not want a permanent shunt. Uh, he walked into my room, he said, hey, I think we're gonna have to do a shunt. And I said, I don't want a shunt. And he said, well, um, looks like we're gonna have to do one. And then he left because he knew I was unhappy and stressed and didn't wanna deal with that. 
Um, on February 8, 2017, the tumor was removed after rating as a two on the tumor grading scale. Um, the tumor grading scale is a one to three scale. Um, it's a little unclear what a two means. Um, I'll get more into it later on in my presentation. Um, my tumor was classified as a pineal parenchymal tumor, which means it's on my pineal gland. Um, less than 1% of people that get brain tumors are this type of tumor. So there is very, very little research done on these types of tumors. Um, due to where the tumor was, they had to remove my pineal gland also. Um, I had the permanent slash internal shunt was also planned, or was also placed on February 8th, 2017 to remain at, or to drain any excess fluid. Um, three years later today, I still have the shunt in place. Um, I set off some metal detectors with my shunt currently, which is a fun fact about me. Um, recovery wise, honestly, my biggest worry during my entire recovery was I was gonna lose my dream job. I'd only been there for maybe a month. I was like, they're gonna replace me. I haven't even done a year. I have no nothing. Um, my boss was actually very fantastic. She called almost every night and would talk to my mom, along with my coworkers were awesome. Um, they sent me many baskets and gifts. Um, this is actually a picture that I still have hanging on my wall of like things, like they sent it to me and all my coworkers said like really nice things about me. Um, so today, um, three years later, um, given the rarity of my tumor, I have scans every six to eight months. Um, I also see a large variety of specialists. I see pediatric oncologists, pediatric neurologists, um, um, an, a neurological ophthalmologist, because I have problems with my eyes. Um, this is a very unflattering picture of me about to go into an MRI, but it's pretty much my reality, so I put it out there for you all. Um, since one of the major functions of your pineal gland is your circadian rhythm, I have a very hard time getting on a regular sleep schedule and I have to take a very high dose of melatonin to be able to sleep. Um, right after my surgery, my self-confidence was very low because the front portion of my head was shaved. Um, I would constantly wear headbands and I would not even let my family see me without a headband because I was so self-conscious about where they had to shave my head. While my shunt now technically serves no purpose. It still remains in my head as having it removed would be another brain surgery that doesn't need to happen. Um, like I said, I set off some metal detectors. Um, January of 2020 marked my three-year anniversary since my three brain surgeries and I've had all clear scans to this day. Um, continuing on with that, I currently work um, full-time as a pediatric nurse. Um, I go to school online full-time and obtaining my BSN. Um, the classes that I were registering for, I did have to drop out of because I was having brain surgery. Um, I'll graduate in May, if all goes well, fingers crossed. Um, this whole experience made me realize that I'm much more stronger than I ever gave myself credit for. I would have never dreamed that I would be able to get through having three brain surgeries, this rare brain tumor at the age of 23. Um, like I said, any challenge I face now, I attack with the mindset of, I survived a brain tumor and three brain surgeries. Like, I got this. Like, you can't, you can't take me down. Um, I'm, so, I'm proud to be a survivor of a brain tumor. Um, when I have patients that have shunts in the hospital, um, I kind of like bond or build rapport with them because I also have a shunt. Um, and like Sarah was saying, advocating for them um, and also educating them about what a shunt does because a lot of times people don't know what a shunt does. Um, every year I ran a 5k called Head for the Cure and that's a picture of me and my sister two years ago at the 5k Head for the Cure run um, in Cleveland. Thank you for listening.